notion notes for our community call, which will begin now. Okay. Awesome. So we'll start with check-ins. Um, if everyone wants to go around and give a little update, um, I know a couple of folks helped to collaborate on this agenda or messaged me with some bullet points, but if there's anything, if you haven't had a chance to do that and there's anything you wanna be sure we discuss today, this is the time to mention it. Um, you can share your intentions for this call and any distractions going on in your environment. And um, yeah, we'll just do popcorn style or um, pass the mic uh, when you have finished your share to someone else. Who would like to go first? I'll jump um, in there. I'll... Oh, I beat, beat you. You'll Sorry. beat me. Okay. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Uh, excited for another community call. Um, intentions are to sync on the priorities for launch, which is coming up, as well as the Give It the Economy. Um, and yeah, props to the, everyone for the amazing collaboration this past week on testing and fixing all the issues. It was really awesome to see, and uh, staging's looking really good. So hopefully, um, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for this soft launch uh, a week from today, or two weeks from today. All right, and I will pass it to uh, Kai. Thanks. The the reason is I need a toilet break, and <laughs> this is the best time. Uh, I was dealing with. Um, the personal and local uh, level uh, this week uh, to finish my moving across the country uh, to another place was we had a quite big household. And if you wonder why it takes so many days, kids, kids, kids. But now it all, it's all better. We now have grandparents. So this means I don't have to watch her all the time. We'll get so much more work done. It will start tomorrow mostly. I'm still waiting on internet and stuff. Um, but that's from me only only personal stuff. I did not involve myself much in development, unfortunately. I did follow, but even that was hard because there was so much going on. So thanks again. Uh, like Willie just said, uh, amazing week. Um, and I'm not distracted except that I'll leave for two minutes. And um, I want to hear what you guys have to say. And I give it to Amin because of his nice smile. <laughs> you know, I want to say I really, really understand you. <laughs> I really movement with kids. I had two kids. One of them was baby and but it was hard, very hard. Hardest day 10 days ago, 10 years ago for my life. Was yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy to see you. Uh, this week, we have a prolific, uh, productive week in US1. We have closed many old issues we are suffering from. And uh, yeah, doing some updates on the front end and the back end. Uh, my intention is to see you guys, the community, be up to uh, sync up with you. And I'm not distracted. But... I pass it to Danny. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Um, my updates, I've been moving some money through Giveth One, heartbreakingly due to gas fees, but um, we have funds that we're donating and tracking, so I've been having fun there. Uh, I had a lot of trouble testing Giveth Two. I'm running into weird challenges with, with that Taurus wallet. So I didn't really get very far on testing myself, but I did get three other people up in testing, so that feels very successful. Um, I had originally intended or thought that we would be launched by now, so I'm in the middle of a bamboo building workshop down on the Osa Peninsula at my other farm, so slightly distracted um, by my environment and other things that I'm working on. Um, but today is my day not to be in the class and to be here with you guys. So the, uh, my intentions are to move through the agenda. I gave all my updates to Forrest yesterday, the things to talk about. And I will pass it to Mitch. Hello. Um, yeah, I felt really good last week that we were able to start testing and actually feel useful a little bit and like being able to put through issues and see the devs resolve them and then see the actual changes. 
uh, happening on the Give It Two site. Uh, I'm fully recovered from dengue fever, so that is also really great news. Um, I was a bit out of the out of sorts last week, so now I'm 100%. Um, my intentions is to figure out what I can start working on next and uh, what's going on beyond Give It Two. And uh, no distractions right now, which is great. Um, I'd like to pass it to Lauren. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm, I was also excited about all the productivity last week. I, I've been feeling like since jumping in here with Giveth, I've been feeling like I've been drinking from a firehouse. It's just like so much stuff. Um, but now I'm starting to feel hydrated. <laughs> like I'm starting to put things together and see where I can plug in. And that's really, really great. Um, yeah. And my intentions for the call are just to sync up with everybody and see like, yeah, what I can plug into this week so that I can contribute to the launch and um, not distracted. And I'll pass it to James. Uh, thanks. Hey, everyone. Yeah, it's been a good week. Um, we've been quite productive on the dev side, uh, as you've probably seen, I uh, got through a lot of issues and um, yeah, it really looks like we just have a few issues to get through. Um, we're hoping to do a new release. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that later. So yeah, it's been a good week. I'm not distracted and um, very excited to make plans for the future with you all and uh, hear more about what you've been up to. And I will pass it to Pass Passlar. Passlar. Yeah, that's me. Uh, I want to say hello again to everyone. Uh, I'm the community manager of Bright ID, and some of you I, I know. Danibel is my old friend. Ashley and I think Lauren joined the connection party with us, and we had a nice conversation. And uh, I spent today in. in out in the woods, which is perfect. And I'm more than 100% myself today. I, I, I love it in the woods. I, I'm so jealous of Lauren and Ashley right now. And of course, Danibal. You are living in like heaven. So yeah, uh, my intention today is to uh, the, the make connections to you in, in, in Bright ID, hopefully, if you want to, and uh, get you verified on Bright ID and also plant a seed group uh, in your community so that you don't need me anymore. Uh, and you can help your friends get verified on Bright ID easily without even uh, us uh, joining you. And I just want to mention that Bright ID started as a, uh, the, as a sub project of Giveth back in the day. Giveth was the uh, first uh, the, the sponsor of Bright ID. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm at home with you guys. And I'm happy to be here. And I pass it to uh, Ashley, of course. Hello, everyone. All right, updates. I guess I feel really awesome about what happened last week with all the testing. And I don't know, my brain is exploding with all sorts of things from becoming a player on Metagame to doing testing on GitHub to voting on a proposal in one hive and like just getting involved in a lot of different projects that are going on and seeing what all the possibilities are and my, my brain is exploding i'm super pumped to get involved with all of this and with all of you and my intentions for the call are i guess to start the seed group if if everybody wants to do that and maybe talk about like a circles trust thing and just you know sync up with the things that happened last week and I'll pass it to Ami. I have tagged, um, I guess, uh, Cam that has not said, yeah. Cam? I think Cam hasn't gone. Cam, you are mute. You are mute, Cam. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, thank you. Uh, no updates, but I did notice all of the amazing work you guys were able to accomplish last week in Discord. Uh, it was just phenomenal. I was just staying, staying updated and talking to Willie about it, and I was just blown away. Um, no distractions today, and I'm downloading uh, Bright ID right now to mess with that. So that's uh, gonna. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what Bright ID actually does. 
Um, and uh, that's all I have. I can pass it to who, Tommy? Hey guys, uh, as Pazlar said, it's another day in paradise. Um, feeling good, doing good. Was excited to help out with user testing last week. I've been creating some content for the FAQs and docs, but I need to kind of maybe sit down with Mitch and Kai and figure out where else to go with that. Um, I'm on board with the Bright ID and Circles group. I'm already on Bright ID and Circles. And similar to Ashley, I've been kind of diving down some rabbit holes with One Hive and um, Metaspace and Metagame and caught a good podcast with Luke that explained a lot of great things. And I am not distracted, except there's a lot of things going on in my mind because of this. I pass it to whoever's left. Mateo? Yeah, I'll go. Hey, happy Sunday, everyone. Um, coming from a really productive and exciting week of development, I think the, the, uh, it was an amazing teamwork for, from everyone, and I am really happy about that. Uh, my intention is to sync up with everyone and not distracted. I think I was the last one. <clears throat> Amazing. Um, yeah, it looks like Kai went for a second. So we've got everyone. Great. Um, well, I can just share um, an update. Yeah, I've, I've had a chance to connect with Tamara and a few other folks and, you know, slowly but surely feeling more comfortable in my role and um, was able to do some testing and plug in some GitHub issues. So feeling a little more comfortable with GitHub, still learning um, Zen Hub, but feeling better with that. And um, my intentions are to sync with everyone and make sure everyone is, is heard um, and that we flow through this agenda efficiently. And um, my distractions lately have been that I was feeling really sick for the last two days, but I'm feeling quite quite a bit better today. So in this moment, I don't feel distracted. Um, okay, so hopping over to the agenda, um, just wanted to shout out with a, a, another reminder <clears throat> that um, I'm updating the, the Google Calendar, direct invites have been updated, the Notion Calendar is up to date, all the time zone issues should be resolved at this point. And so um, if anyone would like to receive direct invites on Google Calendar that are not already seeing them, um, you can drop your email in this chat or you can DM me on Discord <clears throat> and I will be sure to share that with you. Um, and I think, I'm not sure, Willie, if you saw this message, but <clears throat> uh, while I was making the Notion community call notes this morning, there was something weird that happened where the, um, the overall community call notes folder went into my private workspace, and then I put it back into the public one. But because of that, it's no longer sublisted under meeting notes, it's like its own folder that's called community call notes. So if anyone has any confusion, that's where it is, and I'm hoping to have someone with a little more Notion experience help me to move that back into the right folder so that it is organized. Uh, but just wanted to give you that note if you are confused. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over to Ashley um, to share a bit about Bright ID, and that's awesome that we have. I apologize if I say your name incorrectly. I think it was um, Paslar. Uh, we've got Paslar is perfect. Oh, great. Um, so Ashley and then, you know, Paslar, if you want to share any about Bright ID and what you guys do um, so we can get started, that would be amazing. So I'll pass it over to, to Ashley first. Actually, I think it might be better if Paslar just kind of gave a brief description of what it is for anybody who doesn't know. I was just um, willing to take on a role of like planting that seed grouping, being a part of of facilitating that. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. So uh, I don't want to bore you. Uh, bright ID. We give people unique human accounts 
without asking for any personal information whatsoever, meaning that uh, the, we help applications that register through BrightID make sure that every person has only one account and one account only in that application. Like one high faucet uses Bright ID. When they want to introduce it an Ethereum address, they also scan a QR code with their Bright ID application after they are verified. And now everyone only gets to register on one high faucet only once and controls one account only. And for that, uh, you're, you're not supposed to give away any personal information or any money or whatsoever. You give it a name and a, a picture, but it can be any name, any picture that you want just to uh, make this connection making process easier. So when I receive a picture of a cat and his name is like ABC, I would say, okay, who is this black cat? And hopefully someone in that uh, connection party or in that community would say, okay, that's that's the picture that I'm using. And now I'm, I know that I'm making a, a connection to this person. That's the only use. And we're not even saving that picture and the name anywhere. It's just locally saved on the device of that person and then shared peer to peer. The latest picture and the name that they're using is shared peer to peer with the person that they're making a connection to. That's all we do. And based on these connections, we have a social graph, which is free to uh, use for everyone. It's open source, it's open for everyone to see. And uh, yeah, the, based on that, there are several algorithms that go through this uh, the, the graph every 15 minutes to pick up the, the verified accounts on their uh, point of view. And applications select the uh, algorithms that are uh, suitable for their use case. They want to take it harder on the users or easier on the users. They want to take it super secure or they want to take it easy, but have a little chance of having bots and uh, civils in their networks. That's what we do in Bright ID. Currently, we have more than 7,000 verified users and counting. We are we are having six connection parties every day. Feel free to join us. And today, we're going to make a connection. It won't take long. It's going to be like five minutes of the call. And uh, I'm here to make connections and uh, the, the get you verified. But I don't want to do it now. I, I, I would be willing to do it whenever uh, you feel is fine during the call. It's going to be like five minutes of the call. Uh, yeah, I think after the call is fine. Perfect. I'm here. OK, perfect. Thank you so much. Ashley, was there anything else you wanted to add to that? or um, No, I think that, that was good. Perfect. Thank you, okay, so, um, so we'll just keep, you know, this inner space um, conference call line will be open. And so after um, after the community call ends, um, Pessler, if you wouldn't mind just staying on the line and um, whoever would like to join Bright ID can get set up and verified. I'm here. Perfect. Amazing. Um, Ashley, anything you want to mention? Is the Circles local group, does that have to do with Bright ID or is that a separate point? Circles is a separate thing. It's a UBI that they're experimenting with. And Pamvala is currently, I was going to get involved in like a poker game that they're doing because right now there's not really any use for them. So we're trying to come up with a way to be able to use our Circles so that we can create uh, more data and you know upgrade the system so that at some point it can be efficient and be start being used. So I didn't know if anybody wanted to be a part of that or wanted to start like a trust group for that or what. That was it. Um, I just want to share the reason I put this in is um, when I had originally signed up for Circles, they had spoke of that the longer term goal would be for us to have local local circles like our own groups ourselves that we can exchange amongst each other uh, within a community and they I received an email notification that they're having a Congress about that on the 27th um, so for a variety of reasons it seems like giveth and in particular our little local teams that are in a, in the common area it would be beneficial for us to collaborate on that so the 27th is when that Congress is, and I think we'll probably know more then about how we can do this. <clears throat> Amazing. And Danny, do you have um, like the call in details for that that you could maybe plug into the agenda here for anyone who'd like to join? Yep. Yep. Awesome. 
It came in an email, so I'll see if I can figure out how to put that in here. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Um, so then moving on to the Giveth Foundation budget allocations. Uh, the proposal is live. Um, this first link, this is where you can cast your vote on the December budget allocation, which I think Danny set up. So thanks for that. It, I believe it went live yesterday. And then um, just a reminder, this was uh, mentioned in Discord, but the proposal to burn tokens from Kai's incorrect address passed, but the proposal to mint new tokens for his correct address did not receive enough support. So again, there's a link here um, to cast your vote for that. Um, so that can be approved and we can close out that process. Um, mention here that we have the DAO um, channel on the Discord to talk about this stuff. And we should probably make a role uh, that's the DAO role so we can mention everybody that's in the DAO. I, I, I can make that. Amazing. Uh, make a role for DAO members. Yeah, and then this is the reputation DAO specifically, rep DAO with Argiv. Yep. The, the first one we created. Yeah, and if you're on the call and wondering how you can get some of those Argive tokens, um, just the best way is just to continue being an active community member and contributing. We still haven't really figured out the process for how we want to uh, bring more community members into the this trusted seed. Um, but you know, that's one of the things that we'll figure out as we continue to evolve, and we can we are set yeah. up to you know make a proposal. So if anyone is uh, to bring a new member on, and if anyone is really interested in accelerating that process, just post in the DAO channel or reach out to any of the current Argive members and we can chat about what the next steps are there. Yeah, this is something that we that I was working on a little bit. Um, and I think what we were feeling is we would keep it the way it is for the first three months and allow people to participate consistently over a few months earning cred um, and um, earning value consistently over time will then uh, qualify you for the, our, the reputation DAO. Okay, anything else on on the Argive um, or the foundation budget allocations? Yeah, I'll just I'll just add that um, even if you're not an Argive holder yet, you can still comment and give feedback on the proposal. So it's in the DAO channel, it's transparent um, for everyone to see. That's another process that we're evolving. It's still somewhat centralized. We're, our goal is to continue decentralizing this and removing the human bias further automating it and using things like source cred to remove as much of the human bias as we can. Um, but in the meantime, we're counting on everybody who's here to help you know, share feedback. Um, and props to Marco for, he, he, there's an example this past week where he reached out and said, hey, I think uh, based on the current allocation, um, I feel like I'm getting overcompensated and Mateo's getting undercompensated. He, and he said he'd be happy to give some of his allocation to Mateo, which is awesome. Um, so that's the type of feedback we're looking for. Um, and if you feel better DMing that, you can definitely DM any of that feedback to me. I'm happy to consider it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then similarly, moving into the give token section, um, just always we've got here at the top links where you can see um, the whiteboard notes and meeting recording, um, as well as the MVP requirements. But to just go into some updates, um, last week there were some issues with the calendar scheduling. We had old and new time zones. And because of that, there were a few people, like I know Griff, missed the governance call where the group reviewed the spreadsheet and token distribution. Um, I believe this was currently finalized as safe enough to try and good enough for now. Um, you can see this Google Doc spreadsheet link um, for the initial token distribution and issuance model. Um, and tomorrow at our, it looks like tomorrow at our governance call, um, 
maybe because last week it wasn't official official, we will review it again and cr create a proposal if there are no objections. Um, yeah. Maria, anything or Danny, anything that you'd like to add here? Yeah, well, I just want to say it's it's not actually final yet because we've each done our own version. So Griff had made his proposals, myself, Willie, I think I saw Mateo has done one too. So there's some variations between each of our recommendations and in our call tomorrow, we will review those and come up with something we all agree to based on those variations. Awesome. And I do believe this is something that we'll want to put once we agree to it. We'll put it up for our DAO to vote and, and agree to it. <clears throat> Willie, have you seen a way that we can add a link to a document in the vote request? I, I didn't see that. On um, when you create a proposal in Aragon? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we did it for, I think we did it for the first uh, token or budget allocation proposal. Let me double check. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. It's, there's not a lot of uh, fields to fill out when you create a proposal. Right. Simple. But yeah, that's a good way to do it is just to, if we can, just include a link to the spreadsheet or a, or a forum post if we have a forum post about it. Right. Let's see. Because all we have is, all it says is question, and you can't like add links, mm -hmm. but I guess if I just typed out, maybe got a bit.ly or something short, a short sure. URL. Do we, do we have something we agree to use on that? That's what we did for the first uh, budget allocation was just a bit.ly link. I'll put a link okay. in the Dow channel um, as an example. I feel like I had I heard somebody with the description of the, of the question. Right on. I feel like I heard somebody discourage me from bit.ly for some reason, but I don't remember what it was. It's a centralized service. Um, is there, mm -hmm. does anyone know while we're here, is there like a decentralized version of bit.ly? Yes, ENS, is that basically know, decentralized? Tiny URL. I don't know if it's decentralized. Yes. I'm not sure if it's a, it should be a concern that a, a, a URL shortening service should be necessarily decentralized. Sorry that I uh, came in. Nice. Oh, no. Generally, it's, it's just from a security standpoint. That's it's not from a decentralization standpoint, but it's from a security in crypto. I mean, that would be like historically, that's why I, yeah. but I don't know if it's in this use case, it would be a problem to use a, a, uh, a bitly. Just from like spoofing uh, codes, like people have been ripped off in the past in crypto. So generally, people don't want to use them. But I see. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, for, for a sensitive address. Yeah. I've never yeah, had any. I guess the concern is that, like, you know, five years from today, if people are looking back on the blockchain for these immutable, you know, votes, uh, uh, is the your the link, uh -huh. will they still link to the right document? Um, I've never right. had any of it, though. And um, that makes sense. Yeah. Something that, like, they couldn't just erase and get up. I see. Or Thank you. Yeah. Down. Um, we mm -hmm. can always just link to the actual document. It's nice to have a shortened URL in there, but as long as there's no character limits, we could just link directly to the spreadsheet. We have the same issue here with like, you know, Google. If Google were to go away, <laughs> what would happen? Oh, that's for now, oh. I think we can do the best we can there. Okay, awesome. So if anyone finds out about another option, um, otherwise we will put the direct spreadsheet link and then if there are character limits, we maybe will just use Dibitly um, unless we find another option. Um, last week we discussed that the story is the blocker um, for getting this finalized. Um, we still need to define the audience, memes, and the story. Um, these are listed below the priority unblocked issues. Um, Willie, I know he and I are going to meet this Wednesday morning um, to discuss the user story. Um, so we'll have an update, I think, on this part at least midweek or um, for our next community call. Um, unless you want to mention anything else about this, Willie. 
Yeah, um, I know we were uh, all focused on testing Give It Two stuff last week, which is that's awesome. That's definitely the priority. Getting ready for launch. Um, if we have some bandwidth this week, all of these tickets, all these issues that are linked here are in to do. They're not blocked, um, and they're available for someone to pick up. So, um, feel, I mean, feel free right now to end this call if anyone wants to claim any of these issues. Now's a good time to do it. All right, I'm claiming the narrative. I mean, I actually have started a document. I don't really want to share it yet because it's a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> but uh, I'll be ready to share it tomorrow. Is that the agreement on general roadmap direction or which one? Uh, it, it's kind of all three. I mean, I just kind of started hacking on Giveth narrative. Uh, and some of them contributed to memes. But it's agreement on the roadmap, digestible list of key benefits which to me is kind of the same as the next one, summarized list of why Giveth has so much potential. Oh, I see. One is the benefits of holding Give, and the other one is Giveth itself. And then Danny, I'd, love to, I'd love to jam with you on that. So if, if you have any time oh, before, great. this week, or we could, yeah, I, I love this stuff. Oh, yay. Yeah, I, I got into it last night. I started hacking on some really cool stuff because the Giveth one and the Giveth two like giveth to this, uh, giveth for a cause. What uh, There was a lot of stuff coming up, and I'd love to jam on it with you, Cam. That would be great. Awesome. Yeah, we can talk offline to set up some time. Perfect. Awesome. I'll, pick on, I'll work on the reward donors roadmap this week. Um, anyone want to take on the memes, making more memes? And that's, a, you know, any of these issues, too. Like we're doing with Danny, Danny and Cam, just because someone claims it doesn't mean someone else can't help with it. But it would be great if we could get somebody's name on the, um, this, these issues and make some progress this week. I could work on some memes. Awesome. Was that uh, you said that? Tommy. Tommy. Cool. Tommy. Oh, Mitch. Then does anyone want to take on compiling a list of eligible accounts for airdropping? Um, if we need to go through, I think we have in that issue details of which types of uh, accounts are eligible. So like everyone who's donated to uh, projects on Giveth One, everyone who's donated to Giveth, and we basically need to get their Ethereum accounts um, compiled and basically just separate them into a list of like, here's who donated to Giveth One, here's who donated to other projects on Giveth One. Anyone want to take that one on? So that's just going through the campaigns and the milestones and then taking all the receivers of the donations? Exactly, all the all the donors. Um, and some of them actually are, yeah, projects on Giveth One. Um, and you don't need to, to get all of them, but basically, yeah, if you could, if someone wants to get started on uh, compiling those all those donors. OK. And you just want an Excel sheet. Exactly. That'd be perfect. Yeah, I can do that. It's Awesome. Isn't this is this something we can extract? Do, does it have to be a manual process? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, if it's looking like a real pain, I mean, I imagine it could end up looking like that. I mean, definitely don't don't drive yourself crazy, Mitch. Like, maybe reach out and we can see if we can pull that, like, in a more automated way or something. I mean, should I hold know, off on it or should I start on it? I would say start on it, like see, I mean, the start point is, is always going to be like to figure out exactly where uh, we need to get these from, right? Like, I mean, it's clear, like, uh, Gitcoin, uh, give it one, et cetera, et cetera. And like, maybe if we just have like a breakdown of um, exactly where we're getting them from, and then you could come to like Amin or to me or someone, and we can try and figure out the best way to, to get those. I don't know, I mean, if you have more to say about that. But. Hello. Hello. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. If I was about adding Akron as a campaign manager, yes. Well, it's getting a list of uh, wallet addresses that are eligible uh, for for give tokens, right? If I understand correctly. So, like, I don't know if there's a more automated way we can pull all of the people who have like made donations on Give It One. 
rather than Mitch like manually going through there and copying and pasting or something like this. Yes, exactly. There is um, there is a, a very simple way I can do that for you. You know, it's a simple query database. Uh, cool. And yeah, and also, yeah, that's the way. That's the way. Uh, I cannot say any, any other decentralized way. For example, querying to a smart contracts. I cannot say it. There is no way. Yeah. Okay. If you well, want to just. Oh, yeah. Mitch, I mean, you can talk to I Amin, mean, you can talk to me about this after the call, and um, we'll figure out a way, I guess. All right, sounds good. Also, didn't Griff prepare a spreadsheet already? Ah. Last, talk to Griff. So, you mentioned it last there, time. There's issues on each of these, um, and there are some comments in them. Uh, sorry, I, I try to read everything, but I can't remember it all. But uh, I guess Amin would know if give, if Griff was doing that already, but I think he started it and created the issue. Uh, can, it, are we able to assign issues to Mitch and Tommy, Lauren, Forrest on these repos? Because I was I wasn't able to myself. I should uh, be if possible. We should add them to the uh, team to the uh, to the members of the US. Uh, I, uh, maybe. Yeah, we should do that first and then uh, give you access on the repo to write. It's, so everybody should have access. It's all in the Giveth planning. And let me share my screen. <laughs> all right. So let's see who is in the team. We have one team, it's giveth v2. And let me see, yeah, the three repositories are, yeah, giveth2, giveth docs, giveth planning. Members are these. So there is Danny, Mitch, Ashley, Lauren. Yeah. Oh. Um. Not, not sure I'm showing the here. I don't know why I cannot. Oh, it says 13 members. Oh, here. Okay, so these are the members. So you should have access. If you don't, maybe they have access, but uh, then you cannot assign test them to them. All right, let's try here. Issues. That was the one. Yeah. I don't know if it actually wanted to be uh, assigned, but uh, yeah, it would work. Okay, and I can see, so Griff has created a couple issues for this. So separate issues for pulling donations from Gitcoin, pulling donations from revolution.eth, and then creating a spreadsheet of all the donations to projects on Giveth1. Um, and then he also created an issue for himself to go confirm there are no other sources of donations in the past. So the one that is still looking for a uh, assignee is pulling donations from revolution.eth. So Mitch, if you could take that one on um, to just go to the revolution.eth address and basically get a list of everyone, every donor who's ever sent funds to that and the amount of funds they sent. Uh, it's better to just share the issue number with Mitch, I guess. It's issue number 60. You're in the giveth planning repo? Yes. All right, I'm trying to find it here. Tom did a link to it in the uh, inner space chat. Oh, okay, it's in the inner space chat. Okay, I'm looking in the wrong spot here. You guys are concerned we're gonna run out of time on this call. There's still quite a lot left on the agenda. Yeah, I think yeah, we're we good at this point to move on. We, 
thanks everyone for picking up issues on the give it token. Um, those are all the priority unblocked issues in to do. And now we got uh, somebody's name on all of them except for the praise bot. But the praise bot I know will require some development help. So I think we can feel free to pick that one out. But I think we can leave that without a assignee for now. While we focus on getting give it to ready for soft launch. Uh, one other update on the Giveth economy uh, is uh, we talked with uh, Gabby from uh, who's worked on who's working on One Hive as well as Aragon, and Gabby is very interested in helping us out with the um, solidity and backend work for uh, the, the requirements for the Giveth and uh, token MVP. So um, the big the big blocker for uh, Gabby to get started was uh, the issuance and dis initial distribution model that we're going to be ratifying this next week. So. That's part of why there's some urgency there. And yeah, the good news is that we have a, a talented dev who's uh, familiar with uh, these types of smart contracts and uh, with DAOs uh, and is on board for helping us out. And uh, yeah, so so that ticket for finding a solidity dev, we should be good for this initial uh, these initial requirements. And as soon as we can finalize this uh, issuance model, which we're doing this next week, Gabby will be ready to get started on that portion. Amazing. As far as the anticipated deadline for the token launch, I think we're still a little bit too early to make that call. We're working through just the initial blockers. We still haven't kind of broken down all of the work required, but uh, it's at least a month out. Um, so as once we get everything broken down, we can start to make a better guess about timeline. OK, that makes sense. Thank you, Willie. Um, does anyone have an update on OneHive? Or anything to share? I've heard that OneHive is very excited about us kind of being the guinea pig for their uh, DAO template, the OneHive template. Um, and that's part of why uh, Gabby is going to be helping us out with this. Um, I don't have much more news there other than um, we're moving forward with a plan to use the OneHive template. That is not a launch blocker. And OneHive is going to be very supportive uh, of our efforts there. They're grateful because they're interested in kind of one day enabling anyone to you to deploy a one hive templated DAO um, in just a few clicks, and we're going to be kind of a guinea pig helping them um, figure out uh, what will be the first project I know that's going to basically be uh, going through the process of deploying our own one hive template DAO. I, I have one question about this. Um, does anybody know if there's something we could be doing to be applying? I understand they have like a grant process or something that could help us get some funding for this. I think the process, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's just creating a proposal to the OneHive DAO. Um, and before we do that, we'll want to you know, have a for, do a forum post and chat with their community about it. But um, right. from what I've heard, there's their team members, some of their team members who do hold a lot of the honey are on board with this, so we should have some good support. Um, but I think we need to chat with Griff about what the next steps are there, because I know he's been leading the discussions with the OneHive team. Right. OK, cool. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, from what I'm hearing is that Honey is, or OneHive is interested in uh, supporting us with some Honey to help fund this process, which is exciting. Awesome, thank you. Um, so then the overall next steps we've got here, um, Willie and I this morning will meet um, to delegate copywriting on um, the economy requirements and next steps and those user stories. Uh, we went through the issues um, that need to be knocked out in the planning repo. Thanks everyone for who supported in picking those up. Um, got your names assigned above. And then um, Danny and I, hopefully this week or you know maybe when you're back from the um, the bamboo building immersion uh, will build out the iterations and steps and the longer term deployment strategy and get more clear on timeline. And maybe we'll um, speak with you about that too, Lily. Um, and um, to the DAP issues, progress and requests. Um, Giveth one, uh, just last week, Griff had mentioned he'd like to see a simple opt-in for Giveth 1 and 2. Um, so my question is, he had proposed that we test the application by transferring this over to Giveth 2. Um, and I'm wondering if 
if we've made any progress on testing that um, or testing to see if we can accept donations without accountability. I don't believe so. Um, is this documented in GitHub? Um, so this is to allow an option for Giveth One projects to collect donations on Giveth Two, is it? Yes. Yeah, that's definitely fast follow. But <clears throat> yeah, we we've been talking about it uh, quite a lot. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, we should uh, write it in a ticket. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not on the radar for the release of the MVP anyway. Awesome, I can create a ticket for that. Okay, any other um, updates to share for Giveth One? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not mute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we have we have followed the sprint, uh, the Scrum methodology, and we have closed lots of issues this week. We have uh, a, a over, uh, we have an overhaul. Uh, we have an activity on overhauling all the emails and uh, redesign uh, and uh, define documenting and defining uh, what is the process of emailing to user on each step and uh, which users which roles should be informed by email. Uh, we have fixed issues on the UI for uh, undesired, undesired, desirable uh, error pop-ups, uh, which are thrown from the network. Uh, they are removed, and uh, that was uh, <clears throat> that was we were suffering much from that. Uh, it was an old issues. Uh, we have fixed. Uh, UI issues like uh, uploading image and conversations, uh, uh, removing some old and unused tokens from the front end, like uh, anti token, are removed from the application. Uh, we did some testing. Uh, we fixed issues on the back end related to uh, syncing our data with the, uh, with the network. And yeah, uh, these are what I remember. Just that. Awesome. Thank you so much for that update. Um, okay. Any other questions or updates around Give It One? Uh, for, for the issue for getting projects over from Give It One to Give It Two, I think, yeah, what we agreed on is the next step is uh, for somebody to volunteer. And we should make an issue for this for us. But to basically reach out to these Give It One projects. Um, about creating a, uh, a project on Give It Two, we have some time. So basically, current planning is that by next, by two weeks from today, or no, sorry, by next week, we will be ready to onboard some of these projects. So maybe over the next week, we could have an like, issue for someone to just prepare what the process is going to look like for reaching out to these projects on Give It One and inviting them to come create a project on Give It Two. It's going to be somewhat manual for this first iteration. In the future, as a fast follow, we can talk about automating that process a bit. OK, awesome. Thank you. All right, so then giveth two updates. Um, I've got a link here to the staging site content edits that we've got. It's a work in progress. Um, we talked about this a little bit on the dev call, but yeah, the content full invites are full. So that's why we created it here in Google Docs. And then when we're ready and complete, we'll transfer that over. Um, there's a link here to the GitHub issues being tracked from last week and this week's ongoing staging site edits. Um, so yeah, just a reminder, I mean, we did a lot of this last week and, and great work to the team. Um, and, you know, we'll have the next round kind of ready um, tomorrow or by the latest Tuesday to do another big round of testing. Um, and um, yeah, just I left this action for moving forward in the future. Just a reminder that um, the Costa Rican Giveth team is mostly working Sunday through Tuesday. So um, as early as we're able to have test appointments ready. Um, is, is ideal for their scheduling. Um, 
any other big updates on on give it to or you know any um maybe any like patterns or something that we saw or noticed through the testing um that would be good to bring to light on the community call i think it went pretty well i mean um props to the testers like they really did a great job and really uh yeah, I mean the reporting of the of the issues was super great with screenshots, super clear, very easy to follow. Uh, I think we all kind of aligned on the process of how to do this like very quickly, and uh, we managed to iterate, fix bugs, and retest them all in a few days. Like so, that's super smooth. Um, there is like a lot more notes, uh, a little bit lower in the notes about the Gibbeth two DAP. Otherwise, um, I mean, essentially, we've kind of like fixed a rough roadmap uh, going forward uh, for how we're going to do this. So we will be deploying a new test version, um, hopefully by Tuesday. We're going to try for tomorrow, but we can't be 100% sure at this point. Um, yeah, we're cognizant of the fact that like Sunday till Tuesday is best for the Costa Rica team. But I think in this case, um, you know, this has been like a one week sprint for us. I mean, just, we haven't really been able to get through uh, everything in a week. So I think we're actually still ahead of schedule and even having something ready to test for Tuesday would be great. Um, so our, our current rough like idea is to do testing on Tuesday. Um, then to sort of spend this week like doing final fixes and to do a sort of secret uh, quiet live pre-launch uh, next week, Monday. So that's kind of like, it's to be live and for us all to test internally. And um, we're gonna have it there, like if all goes well, we can slowly begin to share that with people. And the idea is to stay within this kind of uh, quiet pre-launch um, phase for roughly two weeks. Uh, I mean, all of this is kind of flexible and it's just ideas for the time being, but uh, there's links in the chat of this community call and in the Notion notes. Um, there's links to the, to the roadmap, which may change as things go by. Um, so feel free to have a look at that and familiarize yourself with that. Uh, but our current idea is to do the incredible big flashy launch, um, something like the 7th of February, but that's just a proposal and um, up for discussion if anyone has got other ideas or um, there's anything else we should consider. Uh, a 7th of February launch would give us roughly two weeks in this kind of like quiet pre-launch live uh, state, I would say. And okay. yeah, I mean, that's our best idea for the time being, but let's see how it evolves. Yeah, I would just like to see that before we do any like go lives and launches that we all have a check in and give a thumbs up on it that we all agree that we're ready to go. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like to be clear, like this is this is a rough plan and there's really there's nothing forcing us to do anything by any date. This is just to like, you know, put a flag in the sand and say, right, this is what we're going to try and shoot for. And this will evolve, right? Like, so I expect us to be having a, a similar conversation as this uh, in a week's time at the community call, checking against these ideas, seeing if they still make sense. And all along the way, there'll be plenty of opportunity for um, yay, yay or nays, shall we say. Right, thank you. That makes sense. And thanks for that thorough um, explanation and for inputting this um, roadmap and um, screenshot here. Um, so I'm just going to just since we're on the topic, I'm just going to skip ahead for a moment. Um, for those of you, I think everyone should have this info already. But for those of you that um, maybe have joined the community call or are going to look at our um, stream of it later, um, here's a link um, to the Giveth staging site. Um, and here's some instructions for helping to test. And um, yeah, there's a link for the, the roadmap in Zen Hub and just a little um, quick screen grab. Um, okay, so then moving on to DevOps, um, just I left in this reminder note from last week, if anyone does not yet have one and would like an at giveth.io email, you're eligible to receive one and you just gotta let Kai know in Discord. 
Um, any other DevOps to share? Um, for this last period, uh, in the next one, we will prepare the release of give it. Uh, but yeah, nothing for the community all stays the same. OK, perfect. Thank you. Um, OK. So then skipping ahead to our Give It 2.0 MVP launch status. We've been discussing this a little bit, but just a friendly reminder, these are the anticipated dates we have. Of course, they can change um, any launch blocking features. So we're in our, we're doing another week um, for the sprint before we do our quiet soft launch. Um, okay, this is just a reiteration. I put all this stuff here it's above now okay um so then on the dev call we had um just previously we reviewed the changes to github for the planning and managing of milestones that um james uh was so great to spend some time um taking a stab at and the notes that i captured from our dev call were that we have a bunch of issues that are iceboxed they haven't been reviewed thoroughly um but the team felt that it was important to keep the issues here. It really was the spot that makes sense to keep them. They're not urgent, but they can always be returned to later. Um, and it's just kind of somewhere that we can store those for now, um, but none of these are urgent or blocking anything. Um, and then the consensus was that Zen Hub is currently a bit chaotic and messy. Um, so James removed the to-do and to, to the best of my knowledge, he removed the to-do and staging columns, which um, was a replication. And so now we can just move the backlog items um, to in progress and done and um, just clean that up a little bit. So um, everyone had looked like the devs had a chance to review this on the last call. But again, um, just above here, there's a link to the roadmap and Zen Hub and feel free to um, work offline and familiar, familiarize yourself with that. And also, you know, feel free to discuss in Discord if you have um, other ideas for how to make this even more streamlined. Um, I'm aware that it is 12 central now. So this is run through the rest of the agenda. And then also, of course, we've got Bright ID on the line if you'd like to get set up and verified. Um, but if you have to go at 12, I honor that and you may drop now. Um, okay, so the marketing team will collaborate on so soft launch content, especially now that we have a rough, you know, general idea of those dates. Um, we will put our planning on the Giveth planning in Zen Hub and use the launch preparation epic so that it can be included in the roadmap. Um, so far, I'm aware of this team, including the Bloom Network, Danny, myself, Ashley, and maybe Lauren, if, if you feel called. If anyone else would like to collaborate or contribute, you can um, ping me on Discord, and we'll get you added to the conversations. Um, marketing strategy updates, I noticed um, the in the marketing channel, um, people were expressing a desire for branded swag, like t-shirts and stickers. Um, but other than that, we need to sync and, and get clear. I would like to share um, on this item around marketing. You might unmute. Oh, yeah, I haven't, I've been following along. We have t-shirts and stickers. We just have, to, I have a ton of them in Florida. I'll just have, they're just not here. Um, I don't know that we'll be ordering um, anything real soon unless we decide we want to allocate some budget for it. But getting things to everybody around the world is, is complicated. Uh, let's see, I think the narrative is the piece that I'm working on right now that relates to the marketing. The thing we want to think about is whether, you, so we had originally contracted with Bloom through the end of the year when our launch was expected to be in 2020. So um, I'll have a follow-up meeting with Magenta and talk about 
what we can do um, to continue that partnership, maybe with uh, a, as a member. Um, so there's a few things we can talk about there, but let's just say we'll meet this week and have an update next week. Okay, perfect. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then SDG impact update. Um, Willie, I know last week you'd received a message about us being eligible, our business being eligible to apply. Have we yet applied and been approved by Braintree? We have applied and we have not heard, when I checked yesterday, we still had not heard anything back from them. Um, so I'm grateful that we still have people to with as we uh, work on getting Giveth 2 ready to figure this stuff out. But uh, I understand the clock's ticking here too. So bummed that we haven't heard back from Braintree yet since our application was submitted on January 10th, I can see. So it's been a full week and we haven't heard anything back. Um, can definitely follow up on that this week. And um, we got Cam on the call too. I was thinking, yeah, at the same time too, we should continue. And while we wait to hear back from Braintree, we should continue just to see if we can get somebody at Stripe on the phone. Because the ideal situation is that we can get Stripe re-enabled but we're not counting on that. That's why we're going down the brain tree path. But uh, I want to talk with Cam because we have we have some ideas for how um, we can talk to some people who are well connected at Stripe and see if we can you know get them to reconsider us because I really do think that they should approve us and we've already built that Stripe integration. But yeah, we'll do we'll do we'll push on Stripe this week and uh, we'll we'll push on brain tree as well. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I have a, I do have a quick update here on SDG Impact. So if you go to sdgimpact.org and you look at the project list, Giveth Foundation is now listed there. It looks awesome, I think. Uh, the button, the donate button, when you click it, it takes a minute to load, but it does bring up a form that you can make a donation with a debit or credit card. So at a minimum, we do have uh, a fiat route for donations. Um, and we just have to put in there where that donation goes to. Um, and uh, I'm go kind of going through it and doing a little test one right now myself uh, to see how that works. And I'll share some info on it in Discord after, as I learn about it. Amazing. That's exciting. Thank you. Okay. And then I've just included this note here, again, adding pilot projects. If you are aware of projects ready to onboard themselves that don't need a lot of handholding, um, this is different from that list that Mitch is putting together. The, these would be new projects, you know, that weren't already um, uh, added to Giveth One. Just any other folks that would like to raise crypto donations or it looks like fiat currency also. Um, so you can add them here to this list in notion um okay governance so no we have not played paid bloom network for 2021 um but danny was that contract paid for 2020 already i don't think so okay i don't think i have received her wallet address yet i'll check Okay. Awesome. We had a question. Yeah, I just looked. I just looked, and I had asked the question as to what uh, currency, which cryptocurrency they'd like to receive. I don't have that answer yet. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then we had a question from last week that I don't think we had a chance to discuss. What invoicing can we automate through the DAF? Um, what can we start tracking and pay automatically? Um, um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pause on that one. I want to follow up with Brian a little bit more. more uh, understand other fees that might be involved. I'm finding out that uh, there are some fees involved in some wire transfers. So I'd like to get that clarified before we jump into adding anything there. Okay, that's good to know. Awesome. Um, and then last week, you also had shared um, that you launched a new campaign 
And I'm just curious if you have any more info to share on this or if you've had any more runs <clears throat> documented. No, this is the one where I'm experimenting right now with having funds from Giveth One actually disperse to the DAF. So, for example, on Diamante Luz, there's the milestone for the caretaker and there's funds in it. And what I would like to do is be able to distribute those funds from the milestone to SDG Impact and have them pay an invoice out of it. So that's where these fees are being uncovered by testing it through here. Okay, awesome. Great question. Uh, thank you. And then this Lumio advice process, Danny, I understand you're heading this. <clears throat> and the question we had from last week that we didn't get to is a lot of what we're doing in Lumio could be accomplished in GitHub. Do we just want to keep everything more um, aligned and, and simple and just work with GitHub on this? Yeah, I'm proposing this just because... Um, I mean, I like Lumio, we've used it really well, but there's a ton of former Giveth contributors that are still on it and getting flagged whenever we do anything on it. Um, and so is there anybody here who feels like, I guess the thing I'm thinking is that link that we put into proposals, for example, and we've talked about having a forum post. So Lumio is what we used to use, right? To, to discuss uh, a proposal to actually signal our preference on it and then be able to vote on it using tokens and refer to that. So uh, it's easy to just stay with what we have with Lumio, but because of our new technical processes around source cred, I think it makes more sense to use the planning repo and to discuss things in GitHub um, and then maybe link to that issue. Um, so this is just where knowing what we've done before and what changes we've made, I, that's my proposal. I, I don't think it makes sense to continue using Lumio if we can do it in GitHub where we're doing our source cred tracking. And I'd love to hear if anyone has an opinion, objection, alternative viewpoint. So the main purpose of Lumio is to for voting, right? To get some quick consensus on key decisions. Is that right? It, it can be for quick consensus on decisions. What it's really more for is kind of like the sociocratic process of somebody making a proposal and saying, hey, I have this idea. I would like to do this. And then uh, a threaded conversation where everybody can chime in and ask questions and get those answers and actually clarify the proposal before submitting it for a vote. Okay, then if that's if that's the main use case, I agree that we should just keep that in GitHub uh, where it's more transparent and people can get source cred credit for participating in those discussions. If that's what you're thinking, I agree. Danny. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking what we did in Lumio, it, it's a great tool and it's designed specifically for that purpose, but I think we can scale it back and meet that purpose with GitHub and get greater benefit out of it being there. Sounds good to me. I'm not hearing any objections, so I think we can call that good for now. Awesome. Um, okay, and then Danny, do you have any grant updates to share? Nope. I got a small one with the Triad Foundation. Um, Chad, within this past week, that's one of the grant opportunities we have. The uh, Basically, the next time that their group is getting together to decide on um, funding projects like Giveth, is March, so we have at least until March to basically get our application ready to go. Um, so yeah, it's not, not a huge priority right now. We should definitely get that done before March. Um, I am curious, I guess, while we're here, is do we have any stats? Some of the questions they ask are like about our prod, our, our budgets for the next year. And um, one of the questions that came up in the application is do we have any stats on like how much has been donated on Giveth One in total? Does anyone know? Mm, that's a really good thing for us to pull out and see what it is now. 
I, I feel like we were around a million dollars had moved through it. That's just my memory telling me. I could be wrong. Cool. That's something that should be easily extracted. Okay, awesome. I, mean, I guess I'll just make an issue and give it planning for to get the answer to that. We're glad to know that. I was curious if we even have the ability to figure that out, or if it's a if we if it'd be a pretty manual process. So glad to hear we can. So here's an interesting. Oh, uh, that doesn't work anymore. Right. Sorry. We could do that again. That would be pretty nice. We had a donation visualization going for a hackathon, and we never made something out of it. But it would essentially show the huge uh, network graph of give it donations and like uh, mm. give a total and stuff. That would be really cool. I think we have an opportunity here, though, because we're already we already have an issue to pull out our lists of donors. So couldn't we just add a field that says who donated and how much, and then total that, and that would get get us both in one query? I'm a little bit surprised that we can't already pull this out of feathers. I mean, I mean, I'm not surprised, but I, I wonder is it possible to like pull this out of feathers or? I mean. I I mean, you're muted. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, it's uh, easy. We have, it's a simple query and uh, the database, just we have the viewer, we have the data profile info, maybe they are anonymous, they haven't filled, yes, they just donated, but the addresses are available. So we wanna get total all addresses, is it? All givers. Yeah, we can have the address. We can have the list of address. Uh, I get it during the call. Uh, it's huge. It can be updated. Uh, so we need just say at this standpoint, at, at, at this point, we need the uh, values. I will fetch the information and give you. Yeah, I'd like to link this into our marketing and promotion discussion. There could be some cool numbers there that we can celebrate. Uh, yeah. Of course. Okay, great. Um, anything else on grant updates? Okay, um, and then our final point, yay! Uh, community and communications team, we like discussed this a little bit earlier, talking about our Bloom Network partnership. Um, how can we best leverage and continue? Danny, I understand um, you're gonna sync with Magenta and see um, if we can continue working with them in 2021. And maybe you and I can talk offline um, with the marketing team about um, strategy and, and how, yeah, we, we best can all collaborate. Um, is yeah, I would, I just wanna expand that to other partners. Um, you know, we have Bright ID, who is a strong partner in the space. Um, we have Aragon, who's our strong partner in the space and one hive. So thinking about how we have like a, a partnership strategy for marketing where, where Bloom is like the first example of that, but we would love to be able to have this kind of partnership with other allies in the space as well. Awesome. Beautiful. Um, okay, I like to do a closing, but we're already 16 minutes over time. So um, I'm going to call it at that. And anyone just as a friendly reminder that would like to join Bright ID, please stay on the line. I will pass the mic over to you, Paslar, um, to lead us through that. Thanks, Boris. Yeah, and Pazlar, I see that you're still muted. I just want to point out this isn't just to join Bright ID. Even if you've already joined Bright ID, this allows us all to connect with each other. Yeah, and I can start for two minutes without anyone hearing me. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's just two minutes. Anyone who wants to make some connections, even if you're verified on Bright ID, it's a good idea to uh, to make a bunch of connections all together. 
And then uh, me and Ashley and Daniel, whoever is available, we're going to create a group and invite you to that group. And then we're going to create a seat group with that. Uh, I, ho I hope you have your Bright Idea app on your phone. Feel free to click on my uh, the, the video. It gets much larger and it's easier to scan my QR code. It's going to get better oh. in a second. There you go. Uh, so you have to click on that uh, scan a code button and scan this QR code with that. Uh, the, then let's go through the, the process together. We're gonna have to move it uh, a bit to the left. A bit to the left. No, Is sorry. Right now? The other way? Uh, Matteo, yeah. can you stop the live stream, please? Like, I lost the uh, admin right now, the right to reconnect. Let me see. Uh, oh, someone. Uh, like I mean, I mean, your app is out of date. You need to update your uh, application. Yeah. Yes, I'm doing that. 